right, so we've got our black paper here because we're going to be doing our um, underwater jellyfish. And we've looked at some photographs of um, the phosphorescent jellyfish that we're going to be sort of using as a basis and idea. So when it comes to thinking about the shape, let me just alter my camera slightly there. The jellyfish shape itself is relatively simple. It's kind of like a sort of current bun at the top, and then it's got sort of tentacles. And the good thing is the tentacles are all fantastically sort of ragged and, and um, disordered, and so you don't have to be really precise with them. But I think the one thing to think about, to concentrate on really, is getting this sort of top shape around. And I think also you want to get that sense of depth. So when I'm going to draw it, I'm going to kind of draw the first front half of the the sort of hood is the technical term, I believe, or the umbrella, I think of it, as, as a jellyfish first. And then I'm going to do the tentacles, and then I'm going to do the back view so that I can make sure that tentacles definitely they're coming from the middle <laughs> of the jellyfish. So you may want to um, map this out first. In that, if you, if you use like a lead pencil, you can just about see it on the black surface, and it doesn't mean that if you, if you don't get it perfect, it, you know, you can sort of go back and alter it. If you like to use a sort of template, we want something with quite a big sort of curve to it. So you could use something like um, a plate or um, a saucer and you could put that on just to start off with getting the curve. But I'm going to just sort of freehand draw. So the shape that I'm going to work on is um, I say this sort of bun shape. And I think it, they also have a kind of um, frill kind of underneath that. So I'm going to start off just by doing this long sort of curve. It does, they do look very much like, um, so with the black, the, the pen is refusing to work on the surface, come on. They do look very much like old ladies bath hats, you know, if you remember you used to have those sort of shower caps that um, nans used to wear to keep your twin, you know, your blue rinse from dry, from getting wet in the shower. So basically you're just going to have, start with this big sort of like C shape, as in um, the letter C, or you could see it as a sort of, a, almost like a potato I suppose. It's quite a sort of blob-like shape and again because they are jellyfish they c you can get away with any sort of shape that's roughly doing this is going to work fine and then to get the sort of frill kind of feeling across the front here I'm going to do a line with a slight curve because I want to imagine it's sort of like a selection of sort of circles put together but I'm going to do a wiggly line and you can be really quite wiggly with this line because <laughs> it's going to be the sort of frill edge of the jellyfish. So if you kind of keep half an eye on where we're headed with our line, so you don't end up going um, massively off the page, but you can just do kind of wiggly up, wiggly down, curling around and just sort of come down to that shape. And you can see, because you've given it that slight overall curve kind of out like that, it does give you that sense that it's a round object. We've been looking a lot at sort of <coughs> our curves and our round objects. So once I've got that sort of wiggly line in, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of mimic it underneath, but I'm going to make it a bit shorter. So, so I'm going to go from this point sort of here to this point around here. So I've got, if you want to mark two points to work between, that's quite handy because then you can sort of see where you're going. And then <coughs> it's just going to be, again, just sort of wiggles and you can do any kind of wiggly shape that you want to kind of get this frill kind of effect. We're going to go back later and do some other line work. <coughs> kind of, oh, that was quite a big noise. Do people want to just... Sorry, it's my blind going up. <laughs> on right. you. Sure, just, thank you. Um, so we're going to go back and do some line work coming out of this to kind of help get this feeling of um, sort of lace kind of cap over effect. And then once I've got that bit in, I can do, imagine this is the wall or the side of the jellyfish. So I'm going to bring just a curved line up there just to kind of join them in. So we're starting to get this kind of mushroom feel to it. And then another curved line sort of coming up this side. And again, things like jellyfish are great to draw because they don't, you know, they don't, by their very nature, they don't have hard and fast edges and rules. And so you can, you know, you can, if you want to make it more pointy at the top, that works too. Some of them are quite much flatter. They kind of move through the water by doing this kind of motion. So anything around this sort of way, uh, they sort of act like a bellows kind of pushing themselves sort of almost like a jet stream sort of pushing water through their bodies and out the other side. So I'm not going to draw the back of the shape in yet because I want to do some tentacles. So the tentacles really can just be any sort of long wiggly kind of lines coming down. But we want to make them a little bit intertwined. So I'm going to do one first. 
because it's quite hard to do two first, but I'm going to start with the first one, should I say. And then when we bring the next one, we want it to kind of wrap. So remember how we do it so it's disappearing behind. So we draw up to the tentacle in front like that, and then we lift the pen off and then bring it through again so we can continue the line round. And that kind of gives that feeling of it passing behind um, the one in front. And we can just add in... And these can really be any shape that you like. You can do any number of them. Eventually, they're all going to be full of doodle patterns. But you can see straight away, this is giving us the sort of long ribbons of space that we can pattern into. So when we're sort of thinking about the design for a doodle like this, it's all about thinking, where can I, um, how can I use my pattern to sort of help create these shapes? They're quite raggedy in length, so it's good to have a couple of short ones. So they're not all... Um, right down to the bottom floor but just a couple of short ones sort of mixing in as well and you can take them into sort of a long trail like that on, on both sides. It's kind of nice to keep a direction so you think about it moving through the water it's going to roughly be kind of going this way so I wouldn't do any that come out sideways too far because it can look a bit too static and we've got to think always about this creature is moving through the water it's very very fluid um, and it's also going to sort of like, it's got all these trailing kind of limbs. And some of these trailing tentacles and stingers can be metres long compared to the actual sort of hood of the animal. Um, so I can bring another one sort of through here, just maybe a short one coming around between these. And they're all sort of joining up inside. Um, and then when I've got um, some basic ones sort of mapped out, I can then think about... I think I want to put one here because a bit of a gap here because they don't, uh, they wouldn't have a gap like that. So let's get another one in and I'm going to take that one behind and it's going to be trailing diagonally across sort of all the way back. But again, it's just passing underneath all of those tentacles in front. That's it. And then when I've got that in, I'm going to think about the, we're going to have the sort of the back edge of the um, jellyfish coming in. So I just see a little bit of it there, but it's going to stop it's got a little sort of frill at the side there and I can extend that tentacle up inside and then here again just a little bit of a indication of the back sort of sweep of the creature kind of coming around there. If I zoom in a little bit you can see where it's sort of and it's just because we've put the front tentacles in first and we can just stop that edge here and it looks like that's carrying on behind. Now one of the lovely things about jellyfish of course is that they're, they're very translucent they're very um, they're not solid in the way that you know other creatures are they'll see through so we can sort of we would be able to see some of this structure through from the other side but obviously that I don't want to get too confusing about that but one of the things you can think about is um, if we think about it in sort of in reverse from doing a black on white drawing where you think about the tonal shading the white that we've got here is like our brightest sort of color our most dominant one so what you could do is then choose if you've got some colours of a sort of that are, aren't as strong, you can use those to kind of create a, an echo kind of effect going on behind the creature. So where you sort of imagine this line would be, you might see a bit of it through the other side. So if you then go into a blue, you can just kind of add little bits of it, just sort of hinting through. We won't do lots of it because it's quite tricky doing a whole sort of see-through drawing, but just by using a little bit of blue pen along with the white, it sort of makes that line automatically fainter and therefore looks like it's sort of travelling behind. And uh, what I am going to do, thinking about that, is with the um, sort of the, the cape, the hood of the, the um, I can't really call it dragonfly then, of the um, jellyfish there, I want to create these sort of lines that are going to come up through it to kind of give this definition of the shape of it. So I'm going to draw um, a pattern across the top here in white and then when that's done I'm going to slightly echo that pattern as if it's on the other side but I'm going to use blue but that may sound quite confusing right now but I'll it'll become more clear as we get through. So the first thing I'm going to do is some circle shapes. I want to do, eventually do some vertical lines that run through this sort of um, hood area but I'm going to just start with some just really simple just some large circles, spot shapes, whatever you want to think of them as. Um, and as they come into the middle of the jellyfish where it's sort of the widest diameter they're going to be slightly bigger and then they're just going to go a little bit smaller I'm just going to do a couple, well I'm going to do four sort of on that side because they do tend to have these sort of patterns 
some elements of regular edge. I don't know if they're um, organs or some sort of way, but then I'm going to bring another um, row of dots here. But remember how we've been using this sort of curve to, to show perspective and that sort of thing. So instead of doing completely round ones, these ones on the side, I'm going to do more of an oval shape because that will just help to give that feeling that this is a curved form and not something completely flat. So if you think about the grids that we were using on the doodle balls, you can see how just giving that a slight oval, so it's thinner than it is, it's taller than it's thinner, just makes help it feel like it's sort of curving down. So same on this side, I'm going to try and draw this without, it's tricky to, without masking too much of my hand, but I'm going to do the same thing. So curved sort of ovals, still trying to get slightly bigger, and then slightly smaller again so we've got that sort of feel and then on this side when we get to the sort of far edges we're going to, do, we're going to make them really thin so they're going to be very long and thin shapes and sort of perhaps we'd see more of the kind of curve so they're sort of almost like long kind of bean shapes sort of coming around that way so that's just helping to make it look like that's moving off and around into the distance and the same on this side but of course this side they're going to curve pointing that way because we're moving to the left hand side so um, just going to put that curve on them so they're going round into the umbrella like that so we've got these sort of circular shapes sort of going round um, now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to, we're going to run just some quite simple echoing kind of lines and patterns in and around these. Well, so they're going to be patterns, but we're going to always think about the shape of the creature and what we're sort of working on. So where you've got your curly, your sort of like um, wiggly lines along here, they're kind of like describing pleats. So can you, if I come in again a bit closer so you can definitely see what I'm about. Um, where you've got a sort of edge that's doing something like this, you can kind of take that line up on that edge and bring it up to the top of the jellyfish and then bring it into dots. And it kind of just starts to help look like um, folds in the sort of surface. It brings that sort of um, quilting feel. And I'm not doing a solid line all the way up. I'm making it go into dots because that continues the line visually, but it softens it a bit so it's quite light and it kind of gives it a bit more of a sparkly feel. So I'm looking for these sort of turned out edges first and then just bring them up into a solid line. And then imagine that they're all disappearing up towards like the spokes of umbrella. So they're all coming up to a point somewhere up here. So again, the front ones, if you do those first, they're relatively straight. And as we come round the sides, they're gonna follow these kind of curves that we've got in the in the in the animal so they're going to come round and they're going to be much more of a curved shape so we do one this side you can see it's going to come round and then I get to about here and I decide to go into dots just to take I'm sort of heading all the way up for imagine there's sort of like a sort of point somewhere up here where they're all kind of gathered together um, so again as on this side you just do it with a curve going that way so the line's going to come up and just go into dots sort of coming round like that. So they're starting to kind of give that cap-like feel, um, but still kind of keeping it quite light and quite sparkly looking. So again, just bring this side round and take him up. And it, it can disappear, you know, if it hits the wall and disappears, that's fine. But just imagine that they're all heading up into this point somewhere up here. And same with this coming up around this side and that's starting to hopefully give that sort of quilting so I, was gonna say, I think I mean frill really rather than quilting um, it's not a quilting jellyfish and then I can bring some of these they don't have to come all the way up they can just start to sort of hint at the, the folds of the creature kind of coming round and I can just bring them up in ways like this and it's always so effective having lines that kind of go in quite close together you start to build, it's, it's always that thing of thinking when you're working on black paper, you're bringing the light. So the closer your lines, whereas in a white, a black on white drawing, the more tightly pack you like, the more tightly you pack your lines, the darker the overall effect. This is having the opposite effect. So the more 
white lines you put in, the more lightness you're bringing. So if you leave some areas undrawn upon, then they're going to be darker and that's going to be where your kind of more shadowed areas come. So I'm just adding some half lines into some of these areas to kind of keep that, sort of get that shape, that sort of vibe. And then I think I'm going to add some bit of pattern detail to these sort of circles because, you know, I'm going to change pens. So I'm going to go into a pink, I think. You don't have a change pen to change, you just got white, that's absolutely fine. If you've got a different size white, you might like to try a different size white. You might try a gold or a silver, uh, but I'm just going to um, go round the circular shapes that I've drawn, but in sort of neon pink, um, just to echo that shape and give it a bit more kind of depth. And it's funny, but these pens slightly run, they, they don't run smoothly on, they sort of slightly fade in and out. And actually I think that works really well because it kind of helps giving that sort of sense of sparkle, you know, cause sparkle we kind of see as being almost like dots of color on a black surface. I think it works quite well. Um, you could do these circles as dots again, as opposed to a solid line or like a bit of both again and where you draw the solid line you're going to feel more light and then when you draw um, a dotted surface it's it's you're letting more shadow in so it looks slightly darker so let me just draw these around I think, I think just echoing these shapes it's very simple but it's quite effective it's so difficult I will always scan this and send it through to you because it's always so difficult to get the colors to come across on the video screen compared to what I can see in front of me. So I'm just going to keep, but you can see how because this is a coloured pen and it's a pink pen, not a white pen, it automatically makes your marks appear softer and, and fainter. So it's a really good trick for getting different levels of tone into a black drawing because you can use your, the coloured pens become like a mid-tone or a sort of sight shadow compared to the white, which is very much the highlight kind of colour. So I've just got to do just these three on this side here. And again, it's quite a simple pattern. It doesn't have to be complicated in this bit because you've got enough going on really with the kind of trying to capture that curve without having to put really complex patterns onto here, which of course you can do if you get in, uh, decide to do another one and want to get more experimental with it. So then I'm going to add some pink lines running alongside where I've got the white lines and going into dots again but again they're just going to keep adding to that texture of the um, jellyfish but without being as strong as the white lines so they're there but they're not going to be as intense and once you see where the circles come you can then bring your lines round the circles as if it was sort of like the lines were like um the passage of water and then the circles are like a stone so the water has to go round them so just let them kind of bend round the circular areas to kind of echo them um, just so that's how they're kind of working together and let's just get a few more in and then where I've got this sort of double line between the white circle and the pink I'm going to start adding some little dots into that and in this sort of black uh, colourful pen on black work dots are really effective as adding little sort of highlights you can see that starts to look like little sort of sparkly glowing moments going round so I'm just going to be dotting round like that and all of them just to bring them up and you can try if you do and do some of them in pink and then I'm going to switch back to my white pen and just do a couple in white then they start to look like a real sort of sparkly highlight so that just becomes a highlight against that and again it's quite subtle but it just works to kind of give it that sparkly feel so let's bring some more dots in and obviously you could do loads more dot kind of patterns in amongst this but we'll, we'll move on to the the sort of lower down bits of jellyfish for next so that we're not because we can always come back and add some more dot patterns but I'm just going to put um, a selection in on where we've got and I think it does start to really get that because they have this sort of lovely pulsing quality where the light that they're producing kind of travels along their surface like those sort of again really like Christmas tree lights or 
Christmas tree lights look like them. I think I think they probably happened first. So we'll give them the the patent on pulsing lights. But yeah, it looks really, really lovely. Um, I'm, I have to say, I've seen a fantastic glass artist who makes the most beautiful sculptures of jellyfish. And you can see how, you know, they really, let you, let you, when you see them in pictures, you really want to see them in glass because they really lend themselves to the medium. It's lovely. So we'll just do a few more in there. And um, I believe my tea slave has turned up with my tea. So um, I'm going to have a quick tea slurp for uh, one second. Are you doing your gaming? No, not. Oh. Right, there we go. That was quite a hot tea as well. Oh. So I'll just... Uh, Put a few more dots in on this side right so so now we've got some detail in here with this one in here oh, I'm going to move on to this sort of collar section down here and I really want to get some more of these lines going so I'm going to start off again with white ones but I'd like to pack them in quite close this time because I love that sort of feeling that they give of a sort of um, like a sort of sound wave so if you've done like a little blue echo don't worry about it just go over the top of it because it should be something that's just seen in the background of what you're doing I'm going to slightly stop them just before the frill above because if remember we're talking about if that's kind of a bit of shadow that's going to relieve the paper at the moment to be sort of more shadow so I'm just going to bring some quite um, close together lines just in a similar sort of way but kind of up into this um, collar area. I'm going to start relatively with them relatively far spread apart because I'm just sort of following the um, pattern that that frill has given me and I'm going to come back and we're going to work in between them to make them um, a bit tighter and a bit more close together but I'm kind of picking up the high points first and as you get round to um, the sides towards the edges you can start giving them a bit more of a, a little bit more of a lean in that direction just as they're kind of a magnet being pulled in that way just to help give it that kind of um, feel of it coming around the corner and then I'm going to swap to my pink pen again and I'm going to do another load I'm going to do one in between uh, it, each of the white ones so I'm going to bring um, those through and because again because it's a, a, a colour as opposed to the white it starts to look a bit more uh, less dominant than the white the white starts to shine up more next to it so I'm just going to bring them all the way you can fit a couple in that's fine and again I think if the pen slightly doesn't do the whole line it's actually quite effective it doesn't matter too much with that so we can keep going all the way and bring the lines along this. Just thinking about the curves, so they're just starting to give that feel of um, the shape and the kind of collar of the jellyfish. Then I'm going to use my blue pen, or you could use a coloured pencil which has got less oomph than a pen, and just bring each of those lines, um, just do a little bit of line work up into that underneath section, continuing so See if you can continue a line up into that thrill, but thrill, frill. But by doing it in the blue pen, again, it's a darker colour than the pink, so you're not going to see it as strongly, and it becomes again like a bit of shadow. Um, oh, just one moment, I can hear him. My little man from upstairs yelling for attention, even though it's past his bedtime. So I just need to get my husband to go and check on him. Andy, Nate's. Yeah, she wants a drink. Just give, them, just give them a minute. Right, so I'm just going to bring that blue line up. And then behind here, where I've got this little sort of overlap, that's definitely going to do the blue lines in the give. But they're all going to be in blue because they're kind of behind. So we can just fill that in with just the blue marks like that under there. So we should be starting to see the kind of shape of the jellyfish kind of coming through and getting the feel of it being a round three-dimensional animal and not a flat sort of cut-out paper. 
Right, so when we've got, we can always go back and do some more work into that top section, but I want to have a look at the um, tentacles, because similar to the way that we did the whale, we can really bring some patterns into this kind of bottom half of the tentacles. We can, you know, we can go a bit more kind of pattern based because we've got these nice um, things to play with. But also do think about with the patterns, what I want to think about is that they're not flat tentacles like, um, again, cut out piece of paper. They're more like rope. So they're, they're three dimensional in feel. So they're kind of, they've actually got a surface that's coming round towards us. So I'm going to do a simple one first. But I'm just going to show you how we can, again, use the pattern to make it look more three dimensional. I'm going to start here because I'm starting in white. I'm not going to start at the very top because eventually I'm going to use the colours to take that pattern off into a little bit more shade and shadow. So the simplest way of doing this is to put, is to do um, um, half moon like sort of stripes across um, the tentacles. So it's like doing a whole series of brackets, but as they're going down, they're all following in the same direction. And that starts to make that look like it's not just a flat um, cut out piece of paper, but a rope like tentacle that's coming down. And keep them being sort of um, half moons like this, just across the width of each one. And as it goes down, your gaps between these. Um, half moon shapes should start getting smaller because the half moons themselves will be getting smaller because the tentacle is getting smaller. So if you pack them in tighter and tighter as they go down, then it has a, um, a you know it reflects the shape of what you're trying to draw and it will help to add to that sense of it being an actual thing that you can get hold of. So all the patterns that we're going to do, look, I'm just going to, have to tilt my camera down. I'm just disappearing off the bottom of the page. All the patterns we're going to do on these tentacles are going to, in some way, under, sort of reflect this curved sort of surface. So we start to give it a little bit of more reality. But as I come down the bottom, I'm going to get very close together. And as you get down to the very, very bottom, they can almost go straight because it's so much thinner that it will just fill in. And you can just, if you want to, just extend that point into a white sort of pen line like that. So just by using those kind of half moon shapes, it starts to make that look like it's something that you could sort of touch. And then if you want to then use um, some other colours and kind of add to that effect, again, remembering these are going to be darker looking, we can do um, some uh, circles and things inside the tentacle. So we could do some, I'm just putting a little pink circle down the side. At the moment I think it looks quite like he's got sort of fancy socks on. Um, just bringing them down. And if you keep it to one side, you can see that also kind of adds a little bit of tonal quality to the edge of it as well. So I'm just going to come down and just fit your little circles into the side of the tentacle as you go down. So as you go down, they're going to go smaller and smaller. If you find that you can't get, because the pens might be chunkier uh, and you can't get it to, to circle, you can just end up doing a little dot in the place because it will just carry that hint of pink down the sort of surface. I think that's quite tricky to see. I hope you can see that if I come again a little bit closer. You might see it's surprising how hard it is to, to light. Um, I think if I put a light on, let me just try that. It's going to be a bit, no, so it's, oh, maybe it's not too bad. It look better. It looks crisper in real life because it's a, a much nicer dark. The, the sort of black's a little bit bleached out by the light there. But and then where I've got the sort of top section, and again it's disappearing up into underneath the, the crown of the jellyfish. I'm going to just do those last curves, same shape, but just put them in to a pink, so they become a bit more shadowed overall. So I'm going to take. Some circles up and there's a circle got to go in there and that's just giving me that kind of shape going up. So all the patterns we're going to do in the tentacles are going to have this um, slightly curved quality to them. So on this one here I'm going to do a sort of chevron pattern, a more kind of diagonal pattern, but I think we can be quite sort of swirly with it. We can kind of get them to keep thinking about doing it basically as a kind of curved shape. 
And so I'm going to start and then they can curve up as well. You can kind of get them moving in different directions. And I can bring this sort of line down so it starts to look almost like he's got a sort of half moon pattern on tentacles here, sort of like quite patchwork kind of feel. And then I do another one of those and then I'm going to bring maybe some half moons just coming off on the sort of elbow of that bend there. And then still keeping them with that kind of overall curved feel. So they're just sort of following that sort of shape. And it's got quite a nice, um, slightly tribal kind of feel about it. And then I'm going to come down again. Um, and I can put another one of those half moons in. And just take that. And remember, if you've got tentacle and it's going across it, you have to stop the pattern so that it doesn't... Um, so that it remains true to its perspective, so it's not appearing on front where it should be from behind. And I can keep bringing those down. I've got a little bit of extra paint on the tip of my pen, so I've just got to wipe that off. It happens because the white ink is rather more sort of sticky and gloopy than the usual black ink. And then again, when I come down the bottom, the patterns are going to get really small and close together so that it almost becomes a white solid tip and I can take that off into a long thin line again just to give it that sort of nice trailing quality. And then of course I've got space in between here for a second kind of a row of pattern. So I could bring, um, just reflecting that using a different colour or I could find another pattern inside that space to work on so I could put like a sort of triangular pattern in and coming through here I can complete that and make that into a half circle and uh, I can use um, some triangles to come in around that which sort of then of course form like a sort of star shape almost like a negative space on that one and then around here well, I think I'll do an echo of that um, half moon that rainbow shape through there and some zigzag stars so you can just sort of fill in with all kind of once you've got that the white line giving the kind of real shape of the tentacle you can come back and do um, ones in between with the blue just always remembering that where that tentacle comes in front your um, pattern's got to disappear behind so we'll just bring that round and Again, I can do a half moon and fill in those last bits of space. And so now we've got uh, two sort of tentacles in. We can still do kind of like quite simple, tri uh, we can use, you still use our circles, perhaps on some of the smaller ones. And uh, on this one, I've got, I've got one disappearing behind here, like quite a small, a relatively small tentacle. A short tentacle, I suppose, I mean, rather than small. And I'm going to do some circles on that. But if you want to try and get them so they look, again, still getting this sort of round feel to them, um, they work quite well, circles, but we'll put a bit of shape, we'll put um, a light spot in the middle, and that'll kind of help make them look quite puffy, which will kind of give us that kind of feel. So again, just at the moment, I'm following the size of the tentacle. So as the where the tentacle is chunkier, I'm going to do bigger circles. And then they've got to disappear off behind that one there to kind of fit in, and then bring that around and then because it's disappearing at the back here so I've got to imagine I'm only going to see part of that circle because there's sort of things overlapping it sort of coming around so I've got that sort of shape in there and then I'm going to go inside those with my white pen to do um, a little highlight circle inside that bigger one. I might have to change out my white pen this one's particularly sticky this evening and Again, just that half moon shape there and a three quarters shape there because it's being blocked by things in front of it. And again here and come down and down into almost nothing until we can stop. And then I'm going to put a white dot in between those sort of coming, but keeping it to the middle of the tentacle. And that should hopefully give us a kind of a little bit of shading. And then if I come back in with my blue, 
I can do some blue dots on the edge of that line and doing the coloured lines, the coloured pen work on top of the white lines is quite effective because the white obviously is lighter than the um, black paper so if you let the white dry a second and then work on top with another colour it sort of slightly supercharges that colour because it's now going on a white background and it gives it that little bit of extra oomph if you want to to kind of give that some more energy and then I've got a little bit see I can just see here on mine this is like the back of this frill so I'm going to do some more blue line work coming up into that just to um, make that part of the background and above here with that circle tentacle is I can add some line work in like that now often with jellyfish they have these kind of quite big sort of um, frills on some of their um, tentacles so to get that kind of effect um, we can do similar to the way that we did the sort of frill work up with a sort of wiggly line we can take an edge but I'm going to use a blue pen and I'm going to do again just some sort of back and forth wiggles imagine this is the kind of edge of the of a kind of frill that's coming down here but by doing it in the blue colour again it's going to be slightly less obvious than the white so it's a little bit more um, translucent looking and then I can bring do the same kind of thing up the other side to bring that through so I've got that kind of um, frill shape and then I'm going to do just some lines coming down to that tentacle in blue but once I've drawn the blue lines I'm going to add a little hint of white on some of the edges again it's sort of being picked up and it's sort of like a highlight so I hope we can just about see those lines of blue and we can bring that up and around here and then I just want to go in and add some highlight detail so and I want blue pen uh, white pen so where I've got some little corners I can just start by adding if my pen's going to work just adding a few little dots of white just sort of along that frill edge and it just starts to make it stand out a little bit more and it's got again that feeling of a sort of pulse of electricity or phosphorescence coming through makes it a little bit more obvious but just not still keeping it quite subtle and then I can do the same on the far side like that and what I can then do is then just do a little flick of white coming down from the spot not all the way down but just like a half little flicking line just to kind of again give that slightly frill like feel and just bring them down so it's sort of halfway down but it's still acting as a sort of highlight on the edge rather than being the whole thing in white and I can just add a little bit of white onto that thin point just to make it look like it's catching the light a bit um, and then I've got another couple of colours here let's try this neon green let's see what this looks like again it might not come out all the way but so I'm going to make this tentacle bring in through I'm going to bring in a third colour of sort of this green I can add some more green in um, so I'm going to do some triangle shapes I'm starting off really small but again not just straight sided triangles I'm giving them a curve so I'm making them out of curved lines and that helps to give that um, shape feel to the tentacle I hope you can see that coming through alright so we're coming round and coming up let's just move the camera and bringing up that shape all the way up and again keeping that curved line feel that's it and then again coming behind so we've got to kind of work out where that triangle will be coming would we'll be poking out of the far side and the pens stop working at that point a quick shake it doesn't I think part it's because I'm working up in the air I've been working on a vertical surface um, because otherwise it really hurts my back and also it's just generally better to try and work that way but the gravity is slightly against me at this point so the gel pens don't like that quite so much if that gel green pens going to be awkward I'm going to swap back into the blue um, and take that 
as that one seems to be hailing a bit better. Take that line up into and underneath the sort of canopy. I think you'd call it a canopy, wouldn't you, of the jellyfish? I don't mean like, you know, volivons. I mean canopy like awning, really. Um, and then I can come back in and let's do some more work into some of these triangles. Again, if you build up these colour pens, if you go over the top, it makes that line look a bit stronger because you're now working on a not a black surface. So you can go in and then I'm going to come in with a bit of my white pen and I just want to highlight this outer edge as if that's got some light ca catching it. You can see that comes around that just sort of brightens that up and then I can take that into circular or little blobs like dots coming on. And then if I bring those dots down that line that I've drawn in like a sort of string of pearls it starts to make that, it gives it kind of quite a nice again sort of sparkling kind of feel. And then I can imagine it's going to disappear here and I'm going to have a tiny little re-emergence of it up here so on that bend here I'm going to highlight that edge and then put a couple of dots in along it again so we're getting this feeling of it kind of like pulsing through and as it comes under this side I'm going to say that right this edge here is going to have the same sort of treatment so I've got a slight rhythm of the let me just turn the light off that might come out better um, um, I'm going to have a slight rhythm of the, um, the highlight so it's going to come under here I'm going to emphasize that side of the tentacle with a white line and add in a few little dots just to boost up that kind of light effect and then you kind of see this sort of pattern of the, the light coming through the tentacles. Right so now we've got, um, I've got a large tentacle coming through here um, so oh, I almost managed to tie myself in knots with my headphones as ever, headphone cable. So I've got one underneath here. I'm going to think about my pattern on this one. I'm going to have some of the areas in between where it's sort of visible. I want to make those a bit whiter. And then I'm going to again have some sort of um, darker areas. So to do that, I'm going to first off just do um, the pattern in blue. So I'm going to do uh, like a half moon dinosaur bump kind of pattern coming through that, like a daisy flower really. But again, it's got to disappear off underneath the tentacle and come out the other side and I hope that's coming up in the camera it's really tricky to it's quite tricky to see here actually let me turn the light on again see if that, maybe that's a bit better so I'm just doing this sort of half moon daisy pattern coming along underneath And then I can take, um, I can do a sort of line coming from that, sort of again curling round but with a slight curve in between. So it's going to come round and help to define that shape. So I'm going to bring that through just as a line coming through. But then I'm going to go back with the white pen and I'm going to just pick up some detail on the sort of high points again. So this area here, for example, because in between these two tentacles. I can add some extra white um, onto that just to make it more, make it brighter, something like that. And then again on this edge here, I can add in as if it's sort of catching the light and just just the tops of some of those shapes. So not all of them, but just a little bit. And it just helps to give that sort of sense of depth. Um, and then I can put some extra little whites in between and then maybe some sort of dot line, dot work along the edge and again it's going to fade up and then when I get to back here I can put a couple more dots in so it's just in that sort of area but it helps to give that in and out kind of feel and same as I come under here I can just pick up on that almost like an arrow shape round there and then just on the tentacle again that's going to start getting whiter and brighter because it's getting denser and it's going to have more kind of light to it. So I'd like to bring another kind of frill into this because I quite like this one. I think I'm just going to add a little bit of extra. I'm going to try a different pen. Add a little tiny bit more white highlight. 
Oh, it's got a thick pen. Oh, I've got a thin pen. There it is. That's what I'm, what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of white into that frill. This one's now not working. You were working fine before. Don't be silly. That's it. Just like a little flick of highlight into that edge and maybe in around there. Now to go back to the first one. This one's decided to go on strike completely. Cheeky individual. So I can just sort of bring those around here. So I'm going to do another, I'm going to do like a, quite a big frill on one of these longer sections. So I'm going to start all the way up here and um, bring, and again, when you're doing this line, so think about sort of going up, you know, and then almost back on yourself and then round and then back in. So you're kind of getting this sort of like, I'm trying to think of a way of describing it. I'm thinking really sort of like, right, almost like staples, that kind of feel. So you're kind of going in and out and then back round on itself and that will help give you a kind of folding feel um, so it's like folding back in on itself and take that sort of down to the edge on that side let me just um, move my camera a little bit because it's quite slightly out of its focal range there um, bring that down um, And then again on the same thing on this side, just bring your big like frilled line coming up here and it can just go shy of that tentacle so we're not getting too much overlap on that very thin point and it can be thinner on that side. And that kind of gives again our sort of frill-like quality. And um, I just need to adjust the curtains, I'm sort of getting... We go from the winter where we're sort of just be trying to light everything up because it's so dark to the summer we're trying to keep all the sunlight out because it makes everything so bright. Um, it's a constant uh, battle. I don't like to block out the sunlight but equally if you can't see what I'm doing. Um, right so then I want to bring this line a bit heavier in white and then we can start doing the frills around there. Um, and just just at the moment I'm just doing like a half line not all the way down but just out of these sort of raised edges and that kind of gives the impression of there being a fold without having to do the line all the way down so I'm just gonna start off by just sort of flicking those half ones down and then we're going to come back with some color to do the kind of ones behind so we get that nice kind of feel and then same with this one just um, I might have to go and just drop my curtains. There's an incredible moment where um, my curtains are just open a chink in the rest of the room and the light is coming through onto a mirror which is suddenly streaming, focusing the beam right on my face which is a, a bit like having suddenly have someone putting a spotlight on you when you're trying to work. Um, I think I might just have to very quickly go and adjust that if you just bear with me for one second. Headphones. Oh. I'm just struggling to get my headphones back. They seem to be really designed like, oh my goodness, I cannot get them in. They're like a pair of fish hooks I'm trying to get over my ears. Oh. These are definitely not designed to be worn with glasses because... Um, <laughs> The other day I was wearing them and I had these on and my glass sunglasses and a mask and I realised I'd got sort of three things going around each ear which seemed a bit excessive really. Right so back to this sort of frill here. Again I'm just going to come along this edge with just little tiny um, flicks of white just kind of coming down from the top edge of my frill. It doesn't matter if they wear out but just a few on the kind of upper surfaces so that you've got that little highlight kind of feel kind of coming round and just bring those little edges sort of coming down 
like that. And then I can go into using the blue or the pink or the slightly darker tone in the same way. So I can just bring them down off the edge, but trying to concentrate them in any sort of little hollows, so sort of where it's sort of going back and the pattern's going folding away from you. Um, we can just bring some of those edges in like that. And that's starting to give that sort of, get that nice sort of frill-like translucent feel. And if we come along the bottom of the edge of the tentacle rather, we can just flick some dark light with a bluer colour coming up towards the top. And so if they sort of meet up, they can. Come on, pen, don't fail me now. And I can bring those in and up just to sort of hint that the frills go all the way down. Like that. Right, okay, so I'm gonna switch now. I'm gonna use some of my, one of my chunkier kind of white pens, uh, which has got a bit more of a kind of, it's slightly thicker end, but sometimes I find it works quite well because I can add in some real kind of highlights by doing some larger white spots along the edges. and just sort of add those in a bit more strongly. And then we're going to do some patterning along here to make this tentacle more obvious. So I'm just going to do some line, again, just curved lines, just quite a simple one, but just really thinking about that nice curved shape coming out towards the viewer, kind of making that. But where I sort of come round and you want to go back so the tentacle is maybe curling away from you, you can slightly change direction so you can kind of go to a straight point and then kind of curl it out again and that helps again to give that sense the tentacle sort of moving in and out but I'm going to keep coming up and up this one just quite gently moving do I mean gently well you know quite simple but pattern working its way up but where it's sort of why I feel the tentacles kind of pushing away or folding away from me, I can uh, straighten them out and then I can kind of change direction with my curves to kind of come over the hill of the hump as it sort of comes up and round and bring that over and coming up into that top bit. And for the last bit, I'm going to just do like give my pen a quick shake I'm just going to do half of the curve the sort of top half and let it disappear off into black and I can continue that curve um, oh I've gone off the camera so you can't see what I'm doing so I've done that so I've got like half the curve on that right side where we sort of will be catching a bit of light and I can then continue that shape um, with my blue pen so that's definitely kind of getting that slight shadow kind of feel. So I just meet the line and continue it down in blue, continue it along in blue. So it helps to get that slight sort of shading feel and disappear it up underneath the kind of hood of the, of the um, jellyfish. And then coming back to look at where the tentacles, we're now sort of getting quite a good feel of all these, where their sort of high points and low points might be. So where you've got areas like here, where the tentacle is kind of curving out towards you, we can get some more kind of shine or sort of more kind of glimmer into it by um, um, coming back and adding, um, oh, no, I've gone too bright now, go, go shadow, that's better, um, adding some white detail. So I find it quite effective. You can add some, just some very simple dots but where you want the sort of height of your highlight you make them bigger and as you come down and it gets smaller you make your dot a bit smaller so we're getting that sort of pattern again just following the curve and as I come around here so they're kind of disappearing here as they come up on this bit they're going to come back again so I've got dots then getting a little bit bigger up to that sort of biggest one and then disappearing away again so we're starting to sort of enhance that kind of highlight feel a bit like we've done on this one here but on this one here on this sort of more pattern based one we can still use them because um, this end here I imagine that's going to be a bit more highlight so I can follow the pattern I've got but I can add in 
just a few extra dots like that to uh, give a sort of like a gleam of highlight and same here because these are sort of wet um, obviously creatures for being underwater so I think we can't, you know, we can do plenty of highlights and sort of glimmers on these ones, definitely. Uh, and then I think I can put some more in here, because imagine it's sort of, un where, where you've got one crossing on top here, I think it's good to put a bit of extra highlight on that to help it stand out and come across. So I can just simply add in some dots sort of along the edge of that one, just to kind of give it an extra oomph as it goes under. And this one's going to go under, so that bit stays dark. But when we come around to this curve here, again, we can add in some highlights and if you kind of follow the pattern so they're kind of part of it it just sort of adds into that general kind of effect I've got one sort of last uh, tentacle that I haven't got um, a chance to look at yet I'm going to fiddle with my light quickly again just take that down a bit so it's not too bright uh, so this is the last one here and so I'm just going to do well not the last last we've got more bits to do but I'm going to this is my last tentacle bit so I'm just going to do some little dots on that very fine line. That really does look like, again, little pulses of light. Uh, and then I'm going to bring those up until they're becoming circles on that sort of high lit area. And then I've got a thick pen there, so I'm now going to change to a thin pen. Still a white pen, but a thin one. And I can come back and do some thinner lined circles disappearing off behind. So again, just by using the two different weights of pens, that one immediately looks brighter because it's a much thicker line, and this sort of thinner one starts to look uh, more tonal because it's a thinner line. So I think looking at, again, looking at the jellyfish as a whole, um, I want to get some more of this highlight work into the sort of cap area at the top. Uh, is that going to be too bright? That's bit better I think we can see so you can kind of see how I want to get some more highlight detail into this sort of front section and again this is when you can start going back in with your if you've got some chunkier pens if you've got some gold they tend to be sort of like um, have a thicker and sort of more bolder kind of lids um, so I'm going to uh, line sorry so I'm going to start by just doing some dots along that frill edge the biggest ones sort of in the middle section and then I'm just doing them on the kind of high bits where they're sticking out at the moment but it's very, very simple because it's just doing a little dot with the pen, but it's just hoping, helping to bring some of those sort of highlight feels into it. I'm keeping it to the middle section to begin with. I might do some more around the sides, but we're going to start by just bringing them here and then dotting up those lines so they come, disappear off into dots, but start with some bigger ones and then come up. And you can see how that's where you're following the line that you've already drawn and just being able to put that sort of more painty, kind of wet mark on it, starting to bring that up and giving it a kind of glowing kind of feel just by following sort of that round. These, the, this particular pen that I'm using is a pen that, it's called an acrylic paint pen, it's one that people use for drawing on stones, because like, it is like a sort of very um, watered down acrylic paint, but it does kind of go on everything, so it's really quite good to use because it's, it gives you a really strong line. They're not as delicate as some of the um, other colours and some of the other pens so you can't do very fine work unless you increase the scale of your paper and do big on get some big paper out um, but they're really useful for adding these sort of dot details because they're stronger sort of painty stronger sort of inky kind of surface you get that sort of like glitter kind of a feel so then I've got this bottom edge here of this sort of frill and now that's sort of disappearing a bit so I want to start by bringing that so I'm going to just come down and where the white lines on that frill meet the the sort of edge, I'm going to do a line, just give it a shake, one of those ones you have to sort of, you can hear the sort of thing rattling inside it, you have to give it a shake. So I'm just going to, where the white lines come down, I'm just going to do a dot at the bottom where it joins on. And it's funny how it's really simple, but it just seems to give that little boost of light, like it's um, a sort of point of light, a highlight. So I'm just going to, and that's starting to make that edge sort of shine out a bit more. I don't want it to be too just a row of dots because uh, so I'm going to then come up each line a, little, a few paces so I do a big one middle and small kind of coming up so try and do gradiate the size of them so you do like a sort of round and round dot and then an actual just press on dot like that and it just starts to stagger the size so they're getting smaller as they're going up towards um, the top of the jellyfish and then that's starting to hopefully give that again this sort of pulsating feel 
as if these patterns are moving up through the surface. Um, so we're going to come up moving, just following up the white lines. You can get these paint pens in a whole range of colours, so if you like using them, they're well worth investing in because again you can um, bring all different colours into this sort of thing and they're not that expensive to buy at all. They're, um, they're on the cheaper end of art pens, which is great because uh, I'm all for the e economy. And the same thing I'm going to do here with these sort of white circles. I'm going to keep my dots sort of to the bottom half, so I'm going to do a big dot and then middle size and sort of tiny. So, and that again helps to give that a kind of flow and direction. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to dot around in a circle. You know, I'm actually having some thought about where these dots are going to go. I think I can get some more into the side now because I feel happy that I can bring those sort of in and bring them onto the edge. And if I start to dot kind of around the edge, it's going to help it stand out against the sort of darkness. So I'm going to continue adding them into the circles. So again, a larger one at the bottom and then sort of two medium ones either side and then a tiny dot at, um, after that. And it's just helping to get that flow and the kind of weight of your mark. So they're doing something. They're not just being a pattern. They're actually giving a sense of form as well. So I'll come round on the big circles you might get you know a few more in. You can add some extra in. And I'm just gonna sort of tilt round that way. So we're starting to hopefully get a really lovely um pulsating, brilliant kind of feel. If um at any point you think your dots are you know the white dots are too dominant, you can always let them dry a little bit and then go over again with a coloured pen and that will sort of add a different feel to them. It slightly knocks them back because again it's not the white is our brightest um, colour on this, so anything that's not white is not going to be as strong. So I'm just going to bring, I've got all my, I was one at the top here, I was going to do these last ones sort of up like that. Bring them up and round. And again, it's not, it's just thinking about where you'd place them. The pattern itself is very simple, but it's just thinking about where to use your colours and where to use your lines to kind of add emphasis to what you're doing and make it work for you. I'm going to bring some dots along this edge now. And I'm just taking that round and up. Like this, sort of through into some of these sort of dot patterns. And that's got, I always think they've got a slightly kind of like a fairground feel to them as well at this stage. It looks almost like all the kind of lights in the fairground lighting up. Um, and then I can, on this where this frill is going behind, I can add a couple more just dots again, so that I'm definitely seeing that edge is coming round. Uh, dot work is really lovely to kind of give that sort of feel. And then I want to get some more kind of like fine lines into, um, in amongst the tentacles, so it's not just the sort of slightly chunkier tentacles. And I think to add like a bit of movement, um, so I'm going to start, which I hope we can see, some blue lines, just going to take some fine individual lines and just run them through the tentacles. So they're just sort of almost, you can, it's very difficult to see, let me just turn up a little bit, see if that's helping. I don't know if that is helping. You can just see, you can just see it's catching the light there. I'm just getting a couple more of these sort of very thin, and they can draw on top of what you've done, but I'm just going to add them in to add some different sort of, um, filmy kind of like floaty quality because they do have all these different kind of very ultra fine tentacles kind of coming through. I've done a couple in blue so I can add in some pink ones as well just trailing out thinking always about the movement of the way the creature's going so we're going you know from this direction so try and keep imagine they're sort of flowing out in this kind of way and through and then when I've got those drawn I can still go back and do you can see wh where my pen has accidentally put little a little extra blob um, on the surface but I'm going to do more of those I'm going to come in and using my pink color get it to do sort of some dot work coming down the trails and it has to be the simplest sort of pattern out there but it's still really effective and I'm just following that trail down with a sort of dot work. I can find another pink one there just to sort of bring that along, just coming along and down and 
following the line that I've drawn, but just putting the dots on, and that starts again to look like little pulses of light. So now I've got my uh, blue pen, and I'm going to do the same sort of thing, just, and I can go quite, you know, you can do relatively big ones uh, and small ones as you go down, but it's just helping to give that neon effect. And if I want to do some really bright highlight ones, I can get my fine white pen and maybe even in the centre of the dots that I've already got. So really tiny detail, but just on top of a pink dot, just add some extra white or on top of a blue dot. And that again just helps to give that feeling of light and of glowing kind of quality against the darkness. Like a string of fairy lights, underwater fairy lights or cat's eyes. Um, just sort of bring them I wouldn't do white on every single one but you can just think about where you might want to add some extra highlight just to sort of bring those in and I've done that's, that's a couple on this side as well so let's come in and do I think on this edge here because it's kind of on this side I'm going to add some more white on here and get that to really sort of sparkle up so I'm just going to put the basic blue in first and I think it's a very effective way of creating this kind of glowing quality. I mean, it's the same sort of thing you could use for if you wanted to do a firework drawing or um, anything around sort of anything that sort of glows at night. Well, that's quite whited out. Sorry, let's get that a bit. Um, let's just turn that away a bit. I'm just seeing that top edge here, and then I'm going to use uh, my fine white pen. Get the right one, um, just to draw some highlights in on top of that blue and so some are going to be quite large and in between I can just do some tiny white dots sort of around this tentacle here I think that's getting a bit sort of because I've done these dotted lines and it's maybe getting a little bit um, lost so I'm just going to adjust and come around from that side so you can see it from that angle so I'm going to add a bit more I think I'm going to come in I'm going to color in round those white circles that I've got there I'm going to get some colour that tentacle in so it's more blue so it's got a more solid blue colour just to give it a bit more volume because otherwise it's going to get lost in the very fine wispy hairs um, which are no doubt sort of stinging tentacles um, I don't think it's a box jellyfish thank goodness so um, let's just get that blue a bit more solid in and this is a great one as I said for getting out your glitter pens and adding some things and I think some silver and gold as well would work because it has got that kind of reflective quality it can really bring it to life and nobody minds a bit of bling and if you want to get into some collage you know you could add some uh, rhinestones and stuff and a bit of glitter because why not why not you know although glitter is a bit like you use open a pack of glitter in 2008 and you'll still be finding it stuck to your under the sofa and stuck to your clothes and things in 2021 that's for certain and I could just add it I'm just going to build some more of these sort of like highlight dots in to kind of get that imagine they're underwater sort of pulsations of light coming through and just try and get a rhythm of it so that you don't do them all just white dots but like if you've got like a group of three like down here you can then slightly enlarge a couple in the middle and then they let them fade off into um, the colours again and it just helps to give that again that kind of thing this tentacle might be coming more close those little fine wispy tentacles kind of coming towards you at that point and then sort of tangling away a bit further down just sort of bring those down right and I think I'm going to probably I probably want to go back and do a little bit more in here now oh, my camera has fallen down there we go so I think in some of these areas now that I've seen this I'm going to then come back in with the blue line into those sort of where the fold looks like it's folding away from you just to give that a bit of um, shadow kind of feel but just adding some more lines so they're not too obvious but they're just helping to add the kind of depth into this crown or hood or kind of umbrella area and I'm going to add some, I'm not going to do a complete circle, I'm going to add like a half moon 
into these circles. And again, thinking about the shape, so they're following the, sh the half moon is following the shape of the circle. So here it becomes almost like a line, just sort of coming through. And we can add some kind of with lines of the jellyfish kind of moving through the water. Oh, oh no, uh, turn that away. That's it, just adding some tiny blue swirl lines just to kind of get that feeling of it moving through the water. And we can always add in some bubbles um, just as it's jetting through with its sort of spray of water. So I'm just going to add a few independent sort of bubbles following some of the shapes of the tentacles. And again, if you do them getting smaller and smaller and bigger into where they've got more space, that just adds to the movement that you've got going. And then I think our uh, um, glowing jellyfish emerging out of the inky depths is just about done. I mean, you could spend a lot more time doing extra patterning on it. You could certainly spend time like like on these sort of tentacles, picking up some more of these edges, like maybe doubling up on some of these light points and then just taking them down towards the edge and really thinking all the time about where those high points are coming in and maybe that edge then can come a bit whiter. There's lots to kind of get lost in, but I think we're pretty much going to have to call it quits there for tonight. So there is my gloriously bejeweled underwater jellyfish. And I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed exploring the depths with him. <laughs>